All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we are starting a new little series here called Nozzlehead Notes for the Field. So uh, joining me today is Jared Roskamp, tech rep for BSF. And for those of you I don't remember me, I'm Brady Kapler, BSF tech rep. We're part of the Nozzleheads and we're just doing this little segment today to kind of have uh, kind of a podcast-ish type of approach here where we're talking about just things that are current uh, right there, what we're seeing and uh, what we can, you know, offer as a potential information for you to use. Yeah, and timely, you know, I think, Brady, just to bring that up real quickly is we get a lot of questions that are right now questions. I think it's important that we bring it to some of our viewers to give them some of the insights that we're seeing. And so, uh, you know, I guess I'll just kick off with, with what I think we're seeing out here. And, and, and that's a great way maybe to kind of justify some of the questions we're getting is we're, we're kind of in what I would call a typical spring, right? Um, maybe not an early one, not late yet, but it's uh, basically we're like an embering fire, right? It also just needs a, a little bit of heat and some wind and kaboom, we're going to be off to the races. And, you know, I think we're going to get a lot of questions and we're going to be running really hard, really quickly because everything's just waiting to go. Exactly. And, you know, we're coming out. We've got cool temperatures right now. Um, the wind may be blowing, but it's cool. So it's it's that type of thing. I know here in Nebraska right now, we've got several days of strong winds, so we're not doing a whole lot in the field. Uh, but, you know, as you said, it's typical. I mean, it's what we expect and we're going to see a lot of times in the spring is not going to get super warm real quick. We, um, and then, you know, we're going to deal with some other weather conditions there. So I, I think that and, you know, going forward is, is that, um, you know, where are, what are we seeing when it comes to weeds coming out of the ground and right now? And, you know, like here we're seeing, you know, some typical winter annual stuff. I've seen some head bit emerging, maybe a few mare's tail rosettes, uh, some penny crests. Those type of things are mainly what we're seeing now. Uh, pretty small and uh, not growing terribly fast at this point. Yeah, I think through my geography, I've seen something very similar. But to me, I'm seeing a, a lot of stratification north to south. You get south I-70 in, in my Missouri and Illinois territories, they're very green. They've been green for a month or better as far as having henbit and chickweed and, and a lot of these winter annuals and mustards that are up and, and actually rapidly growing because we've had some pretty tight windows of, of warm weather, and that's really allowed those weeds to jump off to a good start. You get north up here toward the northern edge of Missouri and kind of where I live around that Quincy area. You know, it's a little bit more brown in the fields, but they are starting to green up quickly. And, and one of the things I guess I've noticed, Brady, is the people that did actually get a fall herbicide on last year, those are really starting to show. Um, the fields that don't have anything are really greening up quite a bit faster. And I think that's something we want to consider uh, as we talk to people that are getting ready to spray is prioritizing fields that haven't had anything on them yet. Um, you know, it, going after weeds that are rapidly growing and they can get out of hand fast, especially these winter angels that like these little bit cooler temperatures. I think you're exactly right. And, and, you know, as you watch your yard or whatever, we've seen a big difference in just the last few days with greening up and things. So things are definitely on the mood, but I think you're, you're right. The fall applications probably can't stress that enough, man. Um, usually I say the best way to get somebody to do fall applications is convince them to do it once. And then they are, they're pretty much hooked because they like the benefits they see when it comes to spring, we're not talking season long control, but we're talking a good start to having a clean planting bed type of thing and not dealing with these uh, pain in the butt kind of uh, winter annuals that we have because hen bit is one of those ones that gets up and it's doesn't have to be very big before it starts to turn purple. And once we start flowering, well, then we've got a bigger challenge Thanks. as far as control because it's not taking up the type of herbicides. That's exactly so, uh, right. I think, I think we've got to be, you know, like you're right. If, if you've got stuff that's up and going, you've got to hit it and, and get after it pretty hard uh, and go that way with it first. And so um, first things I think you've got to think about is, is that are you, is your sprayer ready to go? Probably for most of you, the answer is yes. You've had some time to get it ready, and these windy days are still good times to go over things. Make sure you're calibrated, the things set up that's, uh, you know, basically things that need to be repaired or fixed, all those good things like that. Um, so you can go when you need to once the sprayer is ready to go. And on that same note, Brady, I mean, think about what's going in your tank first. I mean, you can start by putting some new nozzles on there, getting the right nozzle turrets flipped and making sure all that pattern looks good. If you're if you're rinsing the sprayer out and getting it dewinterized, if you haven't already done that, a lot of guys in my area already have. Um, you know, the other thing, too, you know, as we talk about timing and when that sprayer is actually going to roll, we've had a lot of rain. Um, just not to rehash what we've had, but we're starting to dry up more. I think we're going to start to see these warmer windows between these these rains. And so the question I'm getting, I guess, a lot of it is when's go time, right? When, when do I start to go? And 
you know, I, we're, we've seen a lot of, uh, I guess, in my northern part of where I cover some, some 20 to 30 degree temperatures of an evening, uh, you know, high 20s, low 30s in the last two, two to three weeks. And so that slowed the weed, the, uh, the weed species uh, growth down a little bit. But we really like those warm days. And I think we're going to see that in the next, you know, three to five days. So I, I, at this point, I've been telling a lot of guys, even if the weather's not perfect, um, it's, it is go time. If the weather starts to get, you know, ground gets dry enough to cover, I think we really should be urging some of these guys to at least get started. Um, part of that's because of the chemistries we're going to use. Um, it can be fairly flexible. I, I know you and I have talked in other videos about, uh, you know, some of our spring training stuff about weather sensitivity and things like Liberty. But, you know, that's not something we use this time of year. We're looking more at these burn down products, whether that's a dicamba or a 2,4-D product that maybe can be a little less sensitive to these cooler temperatures. And even something like Verdict or Sharpen, which I think, in my opinion, will be the first two that should come out of the barn. Um, really, all they need is some, a little bit of warmth, some actively growing weeds and some sunlight. Exactly. And I think, you know, in uh, my geography where it's been a little bit drier, um, I think it's important to also be you not know, necessarily waiting for it to get dry. We're kind of waiting for the wind to go down. But we're also going to need to get after these weeds because right now we've been, and especially in Nebraska, we've been extremely dry and we don't want to use any additional moisture, have those weeds using additional moisture. So we've got to get after it. And so I'm, I'm right there with you. Verdict and Sharpen are going to be the first things that are in the tank that we get out there and, and get after uh, in the corn thing. And I think, you know, probably Zidua Pro fits in that as well when we talk about for soybeans. Uh, I know a lot of times we get guys that hear, Early April, before the corn planters really start going, they like to try to get some soybean ground covered. And so that's a great spot for Zidua Pro as well, or if you're using a Verdict Sharpen combination, whatever, getting that additional PPO, maybe considering are you using a gut growth regulator with it type of thing like that. Uh, that. But what about glyphosate? You know, where, do we, where does that fit this year with the challenges we currently have? Yeah, before we go to that, Brady, I guess I, I do have one question for you because this is something I, I like to reinforce you know as we have people listen to this for a right now thing you got verdict you're sharpening in the tank what are the three things that you want everybody to do before, when they're going out and setting that sprayer up I mean what are the top three takeaways and then on that same note go ahead and go through like a dicamba application or 24d how does that change that sure that that's actually a good uh, circle back I appreciate that Jared and what we can do I think with, with these, it's really important with a sharpener verdict application is, is that we make sure, one, we're, we're set up with the right type. We talked about the sprayer. We've got the right type of nozzles. Gallon inch, we're not, we're, we're at a minimum 15, 20 is, is really a good way to go to as well. And then when we're spraying this, we've got to also make sure we've got some type of nitrogen source in there. So if we're spraying with fertilizer, we're probably covered there. But then there's always the component of the adjuvant and that's MSO. And when we're looking at burn down, Good MSO is a key, key piece of that. If we, we if we don't have any nitrogen fertilizer in the tank, then we also want to add some ammonium sulfate with that to get us that nitrogen source. It's not water conditioning we're talking about. What we're talking about is providing an ammonia source to drive that herbicide reaction. And that's one of those things, again, you mentioned the temperature thing. We're not as temperature dependent as some other herbicides. So I think when we look at that, we want to make sure that we're getting those things out there and you know rates also a factor too that if we're dealing with you know some pretty big winter annuals maybe we're not just relying on an ounce of sharpen with that maybe we're looking at the possibility of going up to an ounce and a half or two or we're looking at seven and a half ounces of verdict versus five those type of things if we're just burned down so i think the rate the adjuvants are crucial and then also making sure we've got everything set up to go for a, a sharpen verdict residual pro type application yeah, and I, I agree with you so much on that, Brady. That's what I want to make sure we emphasize. We do have such a unique product with the Sharpens and the Verdicts and the Zidual Pro with that kickstore component that that adjuvant load is a key element where other products we have, you can kind of interchange that. But it is important, that especially if we're going to knock these weeds out and we want to do it right the first time, that those three pieces that you take away with that are important. The other add-in I guess I'll have is I think we're going to see some growth regulators go out on some of these woolier fields as I get south. I think we're going to see some 24Ds and dicamba products go into those tanks. Um, again, we, we do still want some coverage, but that it may be a situation where you're going to tweak it a little bit, where you're going to mitigate your, your risk of drift and things. So nozzle selection may change slightly depending on what's in the tank. And if you had like an Ingenia in there or an Enlist One, for example, you'd be limited to those nozzles that you can use there. So just keep those little things in mind as we go out, because uh, as obviously once we start spraying, it's going to go really fast, I think. And, and so it's easy to make some of these little things slip, up, slip out of our mind. So it's just a quick reminder here. But I think the other thing, 
that I would bring up too, Jared, there is, is what about, you know, when we start bringing the growth regulators in it, uh, depending on our trait, we are also going to have some pre-plan intervals. And yeah. so, and, and that also goes with Sharpen and Verdict if we're combining with some other products too, maybe another PPO or something. Keep in mind your pre-plan intervals between when I'm actually getting this down and, and then when I'm able to go spray with that, especially in front of soybeans. Uh, that's going to be the biggest one there too. So uh, again, great options to do it. And you, you, there may be cases like say where you've got some woolly fields with a lot of winter annuals and you need to include the growth regulator with it. Um, and, and just make sure if you have the trade package, you may not have that pre plan interval, but you may not also have that trade package. So we want to make sure that you're observing those and, and those are there for it's kind of one of those things. Those are there for your safety. They're not there just for fun to say, oh, well, there's, you know, you need to wait this long or it's on, it's on the label. It makes a difference if you don't have that trade and what can possibly happen to that soybean stand. That, that's exactly right. And I guess you know, we've covered a lot of ground here talking about burn downs, but. It doesn't have to be hard, right? I mean, all, all this is, is pretty simple. We want to make the application work right. If you think Kexor brands, which would be, again, Sharpen, Verdict, Sigma Pro, think adjuvants and coverage. If you start to put those growth regulators in there, again, watch your pre-plan intervals. Make sure you dial that in a little bit differently and properly. You're going to have a lot of success. And, and again, we've got a lot of spraying in front of us here that we've got some great options to make sure we start with a clean field. Um, having said that, I think we were going to dive off into a topic here that I'm going to jump back to. Glyphosate's typically been one we've talked about here in the same burn down as, as an add in. Part of that's to aid in the grass control and just completeness. Uh, we know how good glyphosate is on winter annuals, but obviously, with the, the limitations in glyphosate supply this year, Brady, I know we're getting a lot of questions around when do I put glyphosate in? When can I cut the rate? When do I not need it? Um, why don't you give me your insights of what you're, you're talking in Nebraska, and then I'll, I'll fill in if I, if, you know, if I have any differences down here. Well, I think I think you're we're back to the, some of the things we've covered is is that we want to make sure like temperature is an important thing because that can affect the glyphosate activity. And so, if it's really cold, we may not be including that glyphosate because it's certainly with the supply we have, we don't want to waste any of it. But you, we use it where we need it, and meaning that you know if we have grasses because a sharpen and a two four D are not going to do much on our grasses, so we need to have something there to help us with grasses. So that's where we use it. But maybe we just just use it for the grasses and we're able to use a little bit lower rate that's targeted at grasses and not expect any broadleaf control out of it. And, and others who may be more comfortable with their glyphosate supply, they can do things where they use higher rates too as well. But if we know if we're in a constrained system, um, that's kind of what we're looking at with, it. hey, let's target where we need it if we need it type of thing like that. Because we know we're going to need some in crops so we can't use it all up here. Well, and I'll call out a couple other items that I run across down here too on, on things like no or non GMO corn, for example. You're going to use that glyphosate now because you really don't have as many options in crops. So, back to Brady's comment on choosing where it's really important, I think that's one that we want to consider. Other places where we've got really woolly perennials in there, you know, uh, dandelions and curly dock, those are, are places in these river bottoms I, I tend to find are old pasture fields that we pulled out down here in Missouri. You know, there are some situations where that's still our best tool and you want to use that bullet when it's the right time. Um, so I wouldn't say broad spectrum across the board, you know, you know, let's cut glyphosate. I think that's a, a natural instinct to do this year to save it for in crop. And by all means, we need to manage it properly on where that bullet needs to be shot. Most importantly, right? If it, and there'll be some situations where it will be better in crop because of the needs. And that's where knowing your farm or knowing your growers farm, if you're a retailer out there, and helping them navigate that situation is going to be a little more challenging than it has been in past years. The other note I'll add here, Brady, is when we talk about cutting the rates, not only knowing your weed spectrum, but also knowing your tank mix partner. You know, things like Zidual Pro that have Pursuit in there, that Pursuit can help aid in some of that grass control and may allow us to use a lower rate depending on what weeds we have. And, and the same thing goes for, for other uh, products out there too. You know, something with a Verdict and an Atrazine mix helps with those winter annuals. You know, you may not need that full rate of glyphosate like you would if you were just running, frankly, a verdict by itself or something, right? So it depends on on your tank mix partners on what's out there and what those other uh, active ingredients are bringing to the party as well, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I the perennial thing is a really great point, and I actually hadn't uh, didn't consider that when I first answered the question, and I think that's a true thing is that 
Um, when you're dealing with perennials, that's a little bit different deal. Dandelion's probably the number one perennial a lot of people are going to deal with early here. Um, I've noticed some up and around here type of thing with their rosettes starting. And so you've got to have some products that are translocated to do that. Um, you know, and that's that's sometimes the expectation gets set for, you know, something like a sharpened dealing with perennials. That's a little bit more of a struggle because we're, we're burning with that and, and we're not necessarily, um, you know, getting a ton of translocation all the way down into the root system and those type of things. And so um, it, it's, it needs to be combined with something like a growth regulator piece and uh, or a glyphosate piece for that. And so that's an excellent, uh, excellent direction for that. You know, if you're looking where, where can I go, where should I go type of thing, where do I need it the most? Um, I think it's going to be one of those takeaways for it. So speaking of takeaways, um, what do you think we got here today here as we kind of wrap this up? Yeah, no, I think you're thinking the same thing I am, Brady. I you know, this is, uh, I'll say our inaugural version here of this, and, and I, these, to me, are a little bit going to be quick hitters. I hope, you know, we, we do this, you know, frequently here and give people some updates from for the field, from some notes. And, um, you know, I, these are the top hitting things we're seeing this week as far as, you know, when to go and, and what to do. And so, to me, my takeaway is know what you got in the tank and dial your spray in because, one, on a year where we're supply constrained like this year, we want to make every shot count. So get that thing dialed in so know what's in your tank and make it work the best you can. And, I, you know, my other takeaway is, I guess, we can't control the weather. And, you know, we got we to gotta work within the windows that we have. I can't tell you if we're going to have a delayed spring or not. I mean, you know, the weatherman is about as accurate as uh, me trying to uh, do a medical procedure. And, and is there, sometimes I question whether they even should have a job. But with that unknown out there, let's not, that, let's not let that be the burden of what we're going to go do. Let's go do things right in the windows that we have, and we'll adapt as we go as best as possible. And, and those are my takeaways. One of my favorite sayings I picked up, I don't even know where I got it, but it's the old saying of Mother Nature always bats last. And so you you just have to realize that, that they're the home team, Mother Nature's the home team, and that's what it is. They're going to bat last, and you can't do anything about it, so you might as well just work around it and uh, do the best you can uh, with those type of things. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up here. I think for this, we've uh, covered quite a bit of material here, and hopefully this is something a little bit that you can use, uh, you know, listening, whether you're going down the road or you're in your office or whatever type of thing like that. We just wanted to kind of give you a little current update here from the nozzle head. So thanks, guys. Hope you subscribe, and we'll talk to you later.